That seems like a smart idea, and you know what? If you're gonna stick with them, you're gonna stick with me. Bass, we'll talk to you later. Direwolves are in blue, Rancid Rats are in orange. We are underway. And it was the Wolves getting that first initial bout of pressure down. However, the Rancid Rats, I mean, historically, this has been a pretty defensive team. I think they'd be quite comfortable on that back half. With Delusion with an awkward clear. Ryan to Lurky, Misty is able to pick the ball, but right back up. Delusion with rotation back. Good bump from Lurky now opens up an avenue for Delusion. Not enough power, and Walker is able to punch that wide. Steve still attempting to get Rancid Rats up to it quickly, and that is something that they need. They need to get a rather good start. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think a fast start has already been proven to be super successful, especially for some of these underdog teams that we've seen. And it's actually been a little bit of a trend for the most part, although at the moment it is the Wolves who are on the attack. We're seeing some of that individualistic style that they were talking about in that video as Walcott was trying to set themselves up for the backboard play. Couldn't quite get there. Delusion, though, will be bumped off the ball. Steve able to press forward. And Steve is the player that I want to focus the most on, the, the Rancid Rats, because while, yes, the lineup as a whole had taken a break, hold the thought, Fiber's gonna find our first goal. Well, this was a big double committed to the delusion and Lurky, Lurky not accepting the back post rotation, getting right back into the play and Dire Wolves, they will go up to a one goal lead. Rants here, Rats, they can't be making a mistake like that. I, I, the team play that you told, that you said was going to happen out of Rance, Rance is going to be a, a big factor to shut down Dire Wolves. Because Dire Wolves, if they are able to run the grounds with the solo play, oh! this stuff will happen where Walcott misses the wide open net. How? Oh, it's a, well, you know, he's considered the dad of the team, and maybe that was a little bit of a boomer moment, but not in the fun way. Delusion will still clear the ball across the middle of the field. Eventually, though, oh, nearly opens up another play. Fiber, you can see, cheating so far forward, and the Wolves are doing such a good job in creating that space for themselves time and time again with the Rancid Rats being held on that back foot. At the moment, ball's going to be controlled in the middle of the pitch. Walcott will be able to drive it forward straight down to Steve, who gets it up and around, it looks like. That was around Misty. Now that's opening the door for Delusion. Shot's going to be good. Center of the net. As we watch this one again, it was set up by Steve initially out of the corner, finds the late pass to Delusion, who was sticking with them, and Misty just, just, just couldn't make that save. Such a phenomenal play out of Rancid Rats, and that is a good comeback. You make a mistake early on, and you are able to right your wrongs here off of kickoff. It will be a second 50, basically a second attempt at kickoff, clear away to the side. Lurky pops that further than Lurky. He's always in that midfield position. It could very much hurt Rancid Rats, but as of right now, it helped them right there. Lurky close to the play. They're really being up in Dire Wolves' face. Exactly what they need to do. Yeah, so many close calls really coming from both teams right now. It's just that aggressive pressure coming through and perhaps the pace being a little too quick. I like this demo play though, opening a door for Fiber who doesn't quite get the recent, but gets the read instead. Okay, I'm, I'm believing more and more that this might actually be the best mechanical player in the region. Oh, what a pinch and delusion to even get close to that. Had to pre-flip in a predictive manner. And Dire Wolves, they at halftime regain that lead that they build early on. A solo play. Building on through. Delusion. Misses the ball completely, or is it just an elaborate fake out of shoot? Steve will try and show that. Lurky to the backboard. Steve going to be backing down, only 16 boost in the tank. That's a good center. Delusion can't quite get the spike. Steve still low on boost, but tries to pop it in the right-hand side of the goal. And there's a defender there. Yeah, there's a few defenders at the moment. Misty actually coming from midfield just to slow the pace down into the corner right now. Dire Wolves historically has always been a team that does try to establish those plays in their back corner. Granted, they, they might be a little bit different now with the inclusion of Walcott, someone who can be a bit more disruptive at other parts of the pitch as well. Yet, you do expect, you know, some tendencies to remain the same as Missy in that third member role comes through, gets that first touch, almost was able to follow up with the second, but that's why Fiber is there. Ball being pushed towards the net will fall in front of the goal, at least until Steve keeps it up and about. It really feels like the Dire Wolves right now, though, Hyferia, are being the more proactive team. They're the ones who are doing a better job in setting that tempo. And I wonder what exactly the Rats need to do to sort of break this uh, early stranglehold that the Wolves seem to have. 
Make sure they have a great rotation. The way that Dire Wolves is breaking them down right now is with very quick solo plays. Misty jumping in from behind. But well, that call catches Rancid Rats off guard in the defensive end. And that's an unfortunate touch on a wall cut. Fiber realizes he has time. Good 50 with Delusion. Get through now. Delusion won't be able to get a shot. But we'll get the corner boost deal. And stuff like that might also bring them a very long way here. As we see the shot immediately get shut down by Lurky, who found the pass into it as well. Love the proactive momentum coming from the Rancid Rats right there. Every time they find that strong defensive touch, it really does feel like they have someone cheating alongside. It's how they got that first goal, and I think it's going to be a reoccurring theme. The problem is when you're committing two people to each and every attack, we've seen the doorways open up in response by the Wolves as well, and Fiber is that type of player who will be able to punish Solo. And again, something we've kind of already seen. Funny, both teams playing to their early dynamics in this opening game. 22 seconds remaining though. Rats need to make this goal come through. Lurky doesn't find the double but finds Delusion underneath. No player across the middle and with only 15 seconds to spare. Rancid Rats, they're a bit afraid of what Darwells can bring at them. Misty sends it to the backboard. No double tap out of himself. And since Delusion is in the way, Fiber gets beat out by Steve. Delusion in a flick position. Mid fails the flick, then goes for the bumble. That clear away from Walcott should be the game for Darwells. Then Rancid Rats drop game number one. Dire Wolves looking to make a statement with that opening game, but the biggest one that really seemed to come from Fiber, that second goal, showing, yeah, 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 Rancid Rats, they're back, we know that, but while you were gone, I kind of established myself on the scene, so I'm just going to go for that fake reset, get the pinch and get the read in front of that net for a cheeky little dunk. Dire Wolves win this one 2-1, to one. and taking a look at that shot differential, nine shots to six, I mean, it really felt like the Wolves game outside of that one counterattacking play. And Dire Wolves, they were playing incredibly solo, but Rancid Rats, they did concede because of a silly mistake where they double committed on the play. They never should have. And, and opening up the game, they were <laughs> the first ones to create an opportunity. Rancid Rats, I still have faith in my prediction, and this could just go the same way as Renegades just haphazardly took care of, care of it. And forbidden kids. I mean, some of these saves, though, coming out of the Direwolves and coming out of Walcott in particular are exactly why they were brought on the team. We saw that play off the post before, but it was actually the first replay in this montage that I liked the best because in one swift turn is able to find both the perfect bump and find the perfect touch on the ball in order to redirect it out. And it came from an angle out of the backfield. It's why everyone has always called Walcott as one of the most annoying players to play against. And it's this sort of defensive style that I always feel like he adapted a little bit from Leduc at one day in stage, or maybe it was always the other way around. It always felt like these two when they were back on the Canberra Havoc in season eight. The reason why they were so effective was because of these sort of obscure defensive plays. And to see that now being adapted to the Direwolves, a team that already had so many strong upsides to their name, it's why this team is really in the running to be one of those squads that can challenge the top two. You always want to have someone in addition to your team who fits your playstyle, not somebody who's going to completely change it around. And I think Walcott is a great addition to the Dire Wolves and kind of rounds it out. Mm -hmm. it, it will have a healthy balance of offense and defense. Rancid Rats, though, they're going to need to find that balance as well. Walcott up first to the play, as we've mentioned him quite a bit. Steve shuts it down. Lurky goes into the corner, but this is game number two, and this is, is an important one for Rancid Rats. Yeah, it is a big one for them. Can they overcome the power of the defense? defensive powerhouse and well the power of dad jokes as well because those are the strongest force of them all from the dire wolf sides lurky thinks he can forces the double commit mm -hmm. on defense steve couldn't yeah. quite make that read got into the backboard turns it mm. into a double touch steve was being cheeky holding on to that boost in the last second and that gives the rats the first goal of the game I don't know what, what happened with Lurky there. Both the Dire Wolves defenders said, no, you go. No, 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 you go. As if they were afraid of what Lurky was was bringing at them. And that will be a goal in the end for Rats here. Rats, a failure to challenge from Dire Wolves. This is a kick of that. We'll go in their possession. Fiber hits it forward. Tattoo far forward. No follow-up, no 50. That's a free ball for Rats at Rats. Lur Lurky will find the 50 with Misty in the midfield. Good speed of the illusion. Gets it through Wall Cup. Well, that is all his boost into the atmosphere and Fiber. You don't want to see him go down your end through the sky. Definitely not. One of the better players from going, you know, corner to corner, end to end, and turning it into a goal. Walcott as well. Ooh, nearly put in one of those situations that, you know, was said to be very dangerous. You almost want Misty there as well, because this was news to me. 
Apparently Misty is the best double touch in Oceania. Well, let's see if he can pull it here. The reset almost comes through. It wasn't a double touch. It was exciting to watch it nonetheless. Lurky, though, patient defense does gake the save. Walcott nicely going on the knees, but actually Steven in a position where he can, can take a short fiver, hurrying back in time. Has to use a lot of boost to do so, so Direwolves, they're not out of woods just yet, need to punch this clear. May it have a tiny touch on it, but that's more like a jab. Lurky runs again, and now it is a Misty challenging, pops out to the side, Lurky's just chasing this ball down, oh. and Rants and Rats can make that work, where Lurky just chases it down, and the rest hold it down in defense. That could just very well work. It, it nearly did right there as we see Delusion. Whoa, slowing the pace down for Steve. I like that fake. Wasn't really enough to throw off the Direwolves, however, who will retake possession. Misty now trying to go for the dribble, but Lurky once again stealing it away. And I have to give some credit to Lurky. He is, in a lot of ways, probably the player with the most competitive experience on the team, despite kind of going on and off again. One season he's retired, one season he's back. But Lurky has been doing a good job in a spy role. Of course, Misty still is spying a goal right here. Finds the angle, finds the point. Dire will tie us up. One season, he's a player. One season, he's retired. The standard cycle of a Rocket League professional. And this is also a standard cycle for the Dire Wolves coming back against the Rancid Rats. They pull a level. And they need to try and get one more out to the side. Fiber gets blocked early on. Had a lot of boost to work with. But now Delusion attempts to pop it to the backboard. No, never mind. That's just on target. I thought that was going to get punched over. Uh... Yeah, I want to see this again, and I want to know where this rates on the own goal right now. Yeah, no contact was made. That was just a snipe shot from Delusion getting it past two Direwolf members. Too much power behind that. I, w I was a little worried for a moment. Misty was the one who kind of tapped that one in. I'm happily proven it wasn't, but Misty still wants revenge. Steve able to clear that one out. He's still not happy with how that play went, and it was one uh -oh. of those plays that seems so oh fiber <laughs> slippery set. So actually, the slippery set fake, and he sends both of them into the woods. Oh my goodness! First of all, great demo right there from Walcott, but it's fiber. You have to expect he's going to go for the crazy play hype area, but sometimes <laughs> the best play is just not touching it at all. Oh, that is filthy coming out of him right there. <laughs> Tie ball game two apiece. <laughs> This is one of those ones where you can just, only the only thing you can do is laugh, and I hope that they're doing that on the side of Rancid Rats, otherwise that will be a momentum gutter. And this time he did pull up the flip reset, and that's exactly why he's so efficient with those flip resets fake, because he pulls them out so consistently other times. Yeah, it, he is such a strong mechanical player, and you never know what he's going to do when given that amount of space. I think it was right for the Rats to kind of panic in that situation, but maybe split their panic, have one person go low, one, one defender go high, maybe it up you know, I, I, it's, it's so easy for me to say what it could have should have mm -hmm. as it stands <laughs> I've never gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with a one of fiber and I doubt I would come out on top either way Misty still trying to try to create some pressure for the direwolves so it's only a tie game it's not as if the rats are done and dusted just just yet Walcott struggling to find the space as the defense was a bit too in their face fiber though will shut down that middle of the pitch good forward play though out of lurky won't stay with it boost secured by Walcott means the challenge will go in the direwolves favor or will it delusion continuing that pressure forward. This has been a sable attack from the Rancid Rats ball in a dangerous spot. Steve keeps it held high up. Eventually, though, the Dire Wolves do find the clear. And Dire Wolves, in this little team segment, they did say, maybe we go for solo plays a bit too much, but right now, that is what, what's accelerating them in this series. That's what's putting them in a tied ball game and keeping them in this game. Fiber looks to get another one set up, booms into the backward wall cut. 50 with Lurky, good 50. Steve wants to continue this play, calls Lurky up, but it's a bit too late. He loses to uh, the momentum, delusion, pinches it downwards. It's going to trickle on down to the center, but wall cut very much prepared for it. That's the experience coming through. Steve actually got touch on that as we enter the final 40 seconds this is gonna end in regulation oh next goal probably wins this game high fury a regulation or overtime this next one's gonna be key and fiber might be looking for it now oh my goodness I've never seen that setup before. I don't think the Rats had either, but they're still able to find that read. Lurky will look to play it from the backboard. Steve right behind, finds the space over Walcott. Swing and a miss from Fiber as well. Gives possession back to the Rats. They're gonna look to end this one in regulation here. Delusion gets the bump. Steve follows it through. Keeps the possession on their side. Wins a nice 50 against Fiber. Lurky has the height, but Walcott had the angle. Ball pushed to the safety of the corner. Five seconds remaining. Still in a dangerous spot. Steve shot, goal! And the Rancid Rats come up big with four seconds to spare.
There is still four seconds, even though it's probably most likely golden goal scenario. There is still four seconds. I can't reiterate enough and as much of a beautiful goal that is for Rancid Rat. Dire Wolves can still very much come back. They have been getting the best kickoffs in this game and into their possession. Fiber gets it over one. Now, this just needs to drop on the ground. Lurky actually keeps it up, has to 50, and I think he thought that was already oh, done and over with. Walcott out to the side. Misty's Walcott there. High, passes it into Misty. Misty, best double taps in the game, but it's a delusion. Who clears it off the line? Yeah, Misty, unfortunately, not able to get the full boost, so couldn't go for one of those double touches, and it's the Rats who, once again, come through clutch in a game against the Dire Wolves. Where did we see this one before, Hyperia? Where where did they do? Oh, that's right. It was, you know, one of the plays of the day in game number five where they got that game-winning goal with four seconds left. Well, they do it again here, just this time in game number two to tie this series up. This is going to be a tight matchup. The, something about the Rancid Rats, they seem to have the clutch gene against the Dire Wolves right now. And when you look at their difference between game number two and game number one, what really was it, do you think, that kind of turned it back in their favor? They've, uh, they've been having more aggression and then just in general moving across the pitch a bit quicker. Dire Wolves, they rely heavily on those solo plays. So what Rancid Rats are doing is trying to shut that down early. Dire Wolves are capitalizing nicely upon that as well. It, it, within this game, there's been so many adaptations already with the flip reset fake and Lurky also for this 50, just may, opening up the avenue for Steve completely. And, yeah, and it all comes back to Steve. I did kind of highlight him as the player to watch, I feel like, on the Rancid Rats. We're talking about how they were able to increase the tempo. But when you took a look at all the pressure that was established, I'd say at least on the midfield and the offensive side, it pretty much all came from Steve. I'll give Lurky credit on the defensive end of the ball, but Steve is back on that same form we saw from him yesterday, one of the best midfielders in the game just because of how fast and how strong this player is at 50s. I feel like if this continues, again, Reds and Rats, they're going to keep this series interesting. Absolutely, and we're basically into that best of five right now. Both of these teams have a one on the board. And then you have a best of five where it is completely tied up. Last time, Rancid Rats were a best of five, but Dire Wolves, they're great at improving the play and trying to innovate new ways to try and break through. But the winner of this will go up a one against their opponents, of course. And let's see who it can be. Yeah, game at number three has already kicked off and it's already Lurky putting shots on target. Double commit on the defense. Might open the doorway for Steve, but couldn't get it past that third defender. Dire Wolves hold on after that initial front. Maybe they'll be able to establish some attack, but you can see right there what I'm talking about, about Steve in the midfield. Actually beating out Fiverr to the play. He is so, so good, so, so fast in that middle of the pitch. And now it's the Rats looking for the shot. Lurky puts it a bit too high. Ooh, that's close. And I think that's something Rants and Rats can still improve upon, where they sneak up too close to each other. And that could have been all fixed if Lurky went a little bit wider. But hey, we can point out and we can be very nitpicky. And that is exactly what Rants and Rats need to do. And I can be nitpicky purely because they have been playing so phenomenal in every other department. Quick challenge from Lurky. This time he's going to bump Misty out of the play. Steve to the corner. He's going to read that one. No, Wokel gets it through and fiber. Delusion. Lurk in the defense. Fiverr still with the play. Walcott on the side. Well, Misty waiting patiently in the midfield. Just what is that? Do thing with a musty. Oh my word, with a musty, it's a misty. Well, flip reflat. Flip reset Musty's pass to Misty, who says, Yes, please, thank you. Kindly fiber. I am speechless, honestly. All I can do is yell, kick, and scream never give fiber space because he will start to start his own freestyle competition and, and do that to you as we see this kickoff actually look good but no not mm. quite shot from steve a bit wide maybe Ooh, walcott nearly gets the own goal right there but the defense able to save it that was incredibly close imagine pulling off that goal and then directly conceding a kickoff goal that's the game of rocket league fiber and with a quick challenge lurky has a bit of time has a lot of time actually it just can go down the entire end of the pitch with only 30 boost in the tank walker 50s delusion still staying close to the play has to use a lot of boost and now his teammate taking off needs to buy the time and indeed does so with, with zero it's not going to get that much further as we do see rats looking to establish an attack lurky goes for the bump got some pressure but not enough to get it past fiber that's steve's job taking it over the top eventually we'll see a corner pass to well walcott and that's a member on the other team dire wolves will happily take that momentum back in their favor right now game three so far 
it's been interesting because, yeah, the Dire Wolves, you know, when given that space, you can see what they can do, but it almost feels like the Rats have had a bit more possession this time around. Their rotation's a bit more focused, again, around that middle of the field and trying to draw the Dire Wolves towards them. They just haven't been able to convert that into a goal yet. It's very much Dire Wolves. They're play, doing flashy plays and rants and rats. They're doing what they need to do. And bumps, demos, and just consistent plays on the backboard. And that's what's keeping them within the game. Dire Wolves, they have to break through with those fancy plays. That just indicates that Rants and Rats' defense is looking as solid. And that double commit might just cause a trouble on their defensive end. Fiber into the corner. No fancy plays oh. out of him. But Lurky half volley, at least attempted, but Missy catches it. It's interesting, though, because the Dire Wolves last year was also a very heavy defensive team. And then you bring in one of the biggest defensive innovators, yeah. Steve. Oh, you got to make those, mate. Off the top crossbar, not quite in. The Rats maintaining that possession. But opportunities against the Dire Wolves are going to be few and far between. Walcott, such an innovator when it comes to defense within the Oceanic region that while, yes, the Rats are playing, you know, pretty consistent offensive play, they're still struggling to get it past those, like, last few defenders. And with that clear fiber cheated forward, it's now going to be a 2-0 lead for the Dire Wolves. It's a very simple goal for Fiverr, probably the simplest one that he just will score the entire day. And that was flying on target anyway. He steals this one away from <laughs> Misty. And I guess it's only fair if you set up Misty like that with a musty, yeah. uh, that will very much yeah. do the job. I, you know what? I'll take this one. I, I may or may not have Fiverr on my uh, Fantasy Rocket League team. Uh, so it's good to see him <laughs> get goals like that. Uh, although I also have Steve on my Fantasy Rocket League team, so... We didn't mind a couple goal or two going back in the Rants and Rats' favor. Either way, still chugging along in game number three. A two-goal lead for the Dire Wolves. Both those goals coming off of the Misty Fiber connection. The two longer-standing members of the squad. Rants and Rats, plenty of time to come back in this one. A minute ten remaining on the attack. Ball gets to the backboard. Misty will slow it down. And that's a good 50, Steve. Free possession to the backboard. Good block on it once again. And this Rants at Rats, they're managing to keep it in defense. Lurky, that's that right into his opponent. Still free possession of the ball. Good pre flip to send it a little bit higher. Gets the scoop. And now to the backboard. Double come in our dire wolves. So Steve to the center. Lurky up for Rants at Rats. This is all their game. And now they actually need to oh. score as well. Release them these. This play in. Oh my word. Missed it with a pre jump save. Rants at Rats. That's the end of their offense. <laughs> it was such a good setup as well. Everyone getting involved past to pass to pass and now fiber almost oh. gets the pancake and dies no oh my goodness fiber takes possession never give him space steve couldn't get there in time gets the pancake off the ground and in dire wolves three to zero how how does that go in my <laughs> what <laughs> I have no clue. I was like, oh, that, that's good. Oh, Fiber's not, he's not going to be able to score, but that, that should be game. And he just scores it anyway, missing now also to the backboard. I, I don't even want to talk about the rest of this game. I just want to continue <laughs> talking about that. A ridiculous slice down. Oh, my goodness. We are living in Fiber's world right now, apparently. Ten seconds left in game number three. Direwolves are going to be quite happy with their performance in this one. Do we have one more in as Fiber's going to go for the double to end oh. as Misty steals it away? And the defense comes through with a very nice save, actually, in that bottom right corner. Don't want to understate that. But story of the game, that player front and center right now, Fiber looking absolutely on form. I think pretty much every time we've gone to the Dire Wolves cam, it was Fiber who was talking at the end of the game. Per usual, Dire Wolves, they do get that third game in the bag and go up two to one. But this is a heartbreak for Rance and Rats. They very much had an opportunity to bring it back in the final few seconds and then Dire Wolves come out with that kind of goal. Okay, Max, Max uh, you are unfortunately disconnected, so we will hopefully have him back rather shortly, but who might have a tiny disconnect right now on the, the play as Rancid Rats as we go over the replay once again. Here, it's just that phenomenal. Three goals is what Dire Wolves scored. 
and all three of them were amazing. Fiber, the mouth movement is ridiculous right there. We don't know what he's saying, but I'm sure it is a lot of decibels for sure. Rancid Rats, they're going to have to try and get back into this game, into the series once again. It's going to be tough, though. It's certainly going to be tough. Dire Wolves are looking incredibly strong. And at that point, as soon as Dire Wolves actually get going, I like this so impossible to bring back it feels like look at that and i think we might just be able to get that next game underway rather shortly as we see the direwolves once again oh my word well you can see he's experienced purely because he's got a towel there to dry off his hands after each and every single game <laughs> That's just amazing. He has the towel there. So going to game number four, Ransom Rats versus Dire Wolves. And it is Ransom Rats' turn to try and get back. Lurky getting a lot of space in the midfield. Steve getting back. Delusion attempting to have a usage, utilize the space as well to the center. Wolko. He almost gets through, but Steve, nice 50. Fiber out to the side. Lurky staying close with the play. Sorry, what was that? What was that is exactly what Rancid Rats say once a dire wolves start popping through. It, it, that, that is kind of the thing. It, it is weird when they actually get going and you almost ask yourself, how can they be doing that? Rancid Rats, they need to try and get back into this series. Misty has a bit of space to work with. Good flicks to the backboard, and Lurky clears it away. Yeah, as we see Walcott now looking for a shot, actually. Thought we were going to go for that pass across the middle to Misty. Not able to connect it this time around, but it's still good to see the Rats. Oh, more on that offensive front now. Lurky goes for a swing, not quite able to make contact, and Direwolves are able to bring him back to the other side. Steve. And to the side, a demo on Walker. That could open up some space. Misty lands underneath Lurky. This is a dangerous position. Wrong footed. Misty taken out. Oh no, no! They have the exact same play in mind. The communication on Rancid Rats is not working out. Yeah, Misty just able to get that delicate touch in. Lurky with the pre jump a bit too over eager. Not able to really make the correct read. Dire Wolf said is, what is that, three, four faked goals right now going in their favor. This is a team playing mind games against the Rats. And with a lead early into this fourth game, the momentum carrying over from that third one. Misty, in fact, finding nice 50s to press it forward as well. The Rats kind of need one of those big pop-off plays. And I, I, not to sound like a broken record, but my eyes keep falling back to Steve right now and whether or not he's going to be able to bang it through. Uh, I mean, yes, the inclusion of Lurky now to the lineup is fantastic. But, but in the past, it had always been Frenzy in that spot. He would look to to make that big pop-off mechanical play. I don't know. Someone else is now going to have to try to fill that void. Oh, my word. And big boomers. <laughs> Come on, Ransom Rats. Give them a chance. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Just taking off the pitch. Four demos in a row. And it's Fiber who breaks through. That's just unfair, Max. Fiber again breaking it through. But the big play was Missy giving that pressure behind on Lurky. Forcing the aggressive challenge that was always going to be difficult against a player with the speed of Fiber. 2 0 lead now for the Dire Wolves. They're looking better and better, it feels like, with each passing moment because they're relying less and less on those, some of those individual flashy plays as well. They're getting back towards that, you know, team play they come through. And if they can add that element to their game as well as, you know, dynamic defense as well as individual... Okay, Lurky, I can't let you get away with that one. Forget what I was going to say. You've got to get that one in. Yeah, that's just so fortunate. Once again, Rancid Rats, they have an opportunity. They fail to capitalize upon it. Steve, only the visit to Lurky. Lurky has a bit of space to dribble down the end. And Lurky staying close to the play, but it's Fiber with a good 50 on it. Dire Wolves, they seemingly haven't figured out Rancid Rats on the defensive end. And they're able to punch away every single attack that's coming their way. But Misty is awkward here. Leaves a bit of space. Delusion 50, but Fiber gets back in time to clear it away. Yeah, and Fiber actually sticks with it again. Another solo play nearly hitting its mark. Steve, this time with the patient defense able to push it through to safety and now Lurky will go for a little solo play themselves relatively easy read from fiber but Lurky's already in that corner problem is so too was delusion and with Steve across that middle of the field that opens up the backside of the pitch Steve barely able to get behind and make that save but Misty still gonna go for the double best in the business doesn't get it this time but will throw one down Steve to Lurky defensive pass tries to create space Walcott throws it back in their face 
as it's starting to get more and more desperate for the Rancid Rats right now. You never want to go down three to one in a best of seven. Absolutely no, and they can prevent that right here, or at least make a good moment of trying to prevent that. And Fiber, how does it feel to be may look ridiculous live on stream? Oh, I mean, he's been doing it enough to everyone else. Maybe it's good to get it back in his favor. Yeah, a little bit too deep <laughs> on that defensive play. Kind of got caught up in the post right there. It turns out that Fiber isn't infallible. Again, make it on mistake now and then. And this one might prove to be quite costly, actually. Rancid Rats back within one. Minute 20 still to go. They desperately need that goal. Misty, though, with that reset, doesn't quite get the next touch. I just worry, Hyperia, because the Dire Wolves are one of the toughest teams to score against. Finding a goal, even in the final minute, this team is always so comfortable when they have the lead. I still expect them to hold on. Well, maybe the illusion can change your mind right here. We'll be on target with Fiber. Oh my word, Fiber, what was it going on? He missed the ball completely, oh! and there it is. There is your point proven wrong. Lurky, who ties it back up. And I was looking for Steve to make the play. Well, I suppose Steve, you know, made the pass play eventually. We're going to call that a fake uh, on the open net before, but is able to find Lurky off that backward. Ball does hit the net. Tie ball game, 53 seconds to go. Look, you're right. I did kind of curse myself. I said the Dire Wolf's great with the lead, but I'm forgetting the Rancid Rats apparently are the, they're the clutch team. They're the comeback team. They're the one you can never count out because for the second game of this series, they are bringing it back and now they're looking for that go-ahead goal. Mm -hmm. What a weird pop down. It almost works out. Misty only with 12 boosts. That's the 50th down the other end. Wolko up high. Delusion oh. needs to get a touch. Does do so, but it's still right into the box. Great save out of the Lurky. I'm pretty sure that was now his Delusion up to the plate. Delusion has a bit of boost to work with. 50 in the tank. Uses it all to get it across the pitch. Steve, 50 in Ransom Rask. They can finish this one off in regulation and tie it right back up. That's all the momentum back in their favor, but of course, they would have to do so. Eight seconds remaining. Walcott off that backboard trying to create some space but the rats are still looking for another last second goal they've done it before they've done it twice really against this dire wolf team but well we're gonna stick with two for now game four overtime hyperia and it's a critical game for both of these teams absolutely dire wolves they can get onto match point and match of rats and need to try everything in their arsenal to prevent that from happening and that's mainly shutting down fiber who was creeping up to the play but a fake coming through or a miss from the rats at oh. rats fiber who's driving underneath once again and he's getting faked out a lot right now by the rats at rats i'm not too sure whether it's deliberate out of the rats at rats but that what, doesn't what? matter if <laughs> they, you manage to make something work like this it doesn't matter whether it's deliberate or not shot denied by that shot though looks good misty's gonna come through with the save as well well, the rats are so dynamic it's so tricky right now on these approaches fake oh, fake yes, shot it. goal steve takes this one in overtime the clutch team comes through again and the ranted rats equalize the series at two apiece a fake and rake a goal here right by steve rancid rats they pull it level once again and this series keeps on going back and forth and i want to i, I want to just reiterate 2-0 for dire wolves within the final what was it 75 seconds they give it away and dire wolves need to close up their back end of the game yeah this is getting a little bit dramatic for a team that you know historically has been so good particularly on that backboard defense it was the rats kind of taking it to them although i <laughs> I have to admit, with some of the solo plays that the Rats have been pulling off, or really some of the team that's trickery that we're seeing, like fake to fake to actually, you know, surprise it was Lurky all along going for the touch. It's really dynamic and really fun to watch. And it's great to see Lurky actually starting to fit in to a lineup that was one of the longest standing. I mean, Delusion, Frenzy, and Steve, those three played together for so, so long. Lurky having to jump in and kind of fill those shoes. It was always going to be a tough ask to fit in synergistically with two long standing teammates. This game right now showed me, you know what? He's fitting in just fine. Absolutely. It's, it's just so uncomfortable for Dire Wolves to play against them right now. We saw a lot of plays where there could have been a save out of Fiber, but he was expecting the touch, and instead of Rats at Rats, they go next to the play. They go, they miss the ball, and they get a free avenue. The play out of them is incredibly smart, but they need to continue this. Winner of this match will get to match point. Yeah, and I feel like in a series this tight, you would definitely love to have that extra game in the bank. Lurky going for a little resets across the middle of the pitch. Why not? Delusion, though, is already being challenged by Walcott. A bit of a shame for the Direwolves, the rest of the team. Not quite with them just yet. 
game number five. Last time, we saw this one go the rat's way in, you know, one of the most dramatic fashions. This one, though, is going to start off with an open goal for Fiber if the Wolves up 1-0. I guess if your opponents are being awkward, they will be awkward. If you just wait the entire time, you get a free goal. Fiverr capitalizing upon Arantia Rats' double commit. That all started with two players going up for the same ball high up in the sky. And then once again, Rantia Rats who need to come back. I legitimately am struggling to tell if this is one of like the greatest series I've seen or like one of the <laughs> sloppiest. It feels like both. bits of both, to be quite honest. And the sloppy play is really making it fun at times. It's making this game chaotic, which I do feel like, you know, historically might benefit the rats, but the direwolves do seem to be, you know, just as akin to rolling around in the mud a little bit. At least Fiber taking advantage of each and every one of those opportunities the rats are giving to them. It, it, this has definitely been a series to remember, though, Hyperia. <laughs> And it's still not over yet. We're only four games in. Big Boomer, Lurky, I think he got bumped. No, never mind. Absolutely not. Steve was expecting the tap. Delusion still placed on the backboard and wants to recreate oh, yeah. that scenario. This time, Steve is there, bangs it off the post. An absolute ringer. And once again, it's the Rats, Rats who hit the woodworks and stagnate into offense. Get, have to get back in defense just a bit. Lurky makes it awkward once again, basing a teammate, but also an opponent. See, the thing is, and the problem with Steve's shot that we saw before, was it wasn't in the final minute. Like, apparently the Rats are only allowed to score and equalize games in the final minute. That's just one of their team rules. Steve, again, shots on target, but not the final minute, so the Dire Wolves have to do the right thing and make that clearing save. Now Fiber will go ahead and take that ball off the back. Work can only take it to the middle of the field where we do see the Rats reestablish attacking pressure. Steve, and to the center. Miss these things close. That's a dangerous um, commit from Delusion. He makes it work, and then he can go for a dangerous commit. Oh my word! Is Steve laying an egg on that boost? Lurky just going underneath. I think Steve got the boost in the end. This is uh, exactly as you say. Once again, such a weird play. Mm -hmm. It, it, both these teams are so unique in how they attack the ball. You have the Dire Wolves who keep going for these defensive plays from, like, behind the ball towards in front of it. You have the Rancid Rats whose attacks every single time is riddled with fakes and awkward touches, throwing the Dire Wolves off balance. This game is so tough to read, and it's why I think a lot of these individual moments are really standing out, because when the team play is so chaotic and all over the place, it's going to be the individual moments that really shine through. Case in point, Misty with that steal right there. There, almost got the dunk on Delusion as well. And that's where the Dire Wolves do, you would think, have the edge with a player like Fiber who can come through with these individual plays. It's, it's why they have the lead right now, and Walcott is just going to add to it, shuts down the corner, and makes it a 2-0 lead. Dire Wolves, they figured out the awkward rotation, the shot coming through. You don't really blame Rats Rant since they were in a scenario where panic wasn't too crazy to be happening, but at the same time, you are playing in RLCS in the quarterfinals. You've already reached top eight. Panic like that. Lurky, that's just a great demo. I was going to say, his panic like that can't be happening. It's kickoff right now. And once again, Rats and Rats have to bring it back from two. Yeah, there was no real haste on that kickoff play, though. Really slowing down the tempo after the demo. The Rancid Rats didn't take advantage of the man's advantage that they possibly could have. They were more focused on making sure the touch was accurate. And speaking of accurate touches, speaking of defensive touches coming from behind the ball, Walcott does it again to give attacking pressure for the Dire Wolves. Fiber, though, a bit too far forward on this instance. Steve is going to take it all the way into that corner. Misty makes the read underneath, and Lurky and Steve make contact with each other. That leaves poor Delusion all on their own. Steve from behind, though, does stop the attack. Now, once around, they get into the same territory that, that, were, that they were in before Fiber. This time doesn't want to let it happen, and Misty also certainly does not. Misses the double, but then there's Walco who places the bottom right. Exquisite placement, and Dario Wolves, they can either throw the game away or just completely crush Ransom. So that's why Walcott calls Misty the best double touch in the region, because it sets him up perfectly for goals, I fear. Yeah, I think we figured it out. Uh, either way, the Dire Wolves now up 3-0 in this one. Look, Missy actually does have some sick double touches when given that space. I'm not taking that away from this player at all. However, that was all set up for Walcott, who makes it stick.
Ooh, lurky. Nice. <laughs> Rings of the crossbar. Uh, I don't want to see how many times rats, rats have hit the woodwork in a, a important moment where they could have been able to kickstart a comeback, but instead they ping it off the crossbar or off the post. Whichever one, it just keeps on happening. And I think with that rats and rats, they're going to struggle to come back. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, especially in this game, but fortunately for the rats and rats. Well, they're going to have, you know, another crack at it. 33 seconds remaining. Very unlikely we see the rats come back in this one. In fact, dare I say it, the Dire Wolves have this one done and dust it with the ball on the orange side of the pitch. Misty power behind that shot. Well, it's only going to hit the backboard, but Steve will go ahead and follow it through. I just worry right now for the rats because if the games continue to be this chaotic, I, I, it really is looking like that's where Fiber is thriving the most. And more likely than not, the Wolves will continue to have these strengths and these touches go their way. Oh, is that going to roll on in? Yeah. Yes, that is going to yep. trickle on in. And uh, four seconds, the fourth goal. It's only fitting in Dire Wolves. They have been able to get the better of Rancid Rats pretty much every single time. Rancid Rats, though, during that close, during this closing stage of the game, they step up. They say, OK, it's time to go. We've got nothing to lose. And Dire Wolves, they start to lose everything. That's how Rancid Rats already got two on the board. And I kind of want to see a game seven in this. Yeah, so do I. And I think the big thing that the Rats need to do is keep this game as close as possible. It does feel like when the Dire Wolves are allowed to run away with it, the Rats kind of lose a little bit of that luster. But every time the games get close towards the tail end of it all, that's when the Rats really start to hit their form and even with this game i don't really feel that scoreline is too reflective of how close it actually was i think the dire wolves were the better team yes but there were a couple shots from the rats that probably should have gone in they were just a little bit off the mark in terms of accuracy that's always unfortunate when we see Walker and Missy showing up massive in this game for Dire Wolves and the Rants and Rats, as you say. They, they get into the attack, but the shots are just not quite there. And this awkward scenario within the first 30 seconds to open up the game, that also just can't feel good. No, it, it is always tough to bounce back from those situations, yet if the Rancid Rats storyline and feel from the team, if they want to be reborn, if they want that redemption, this is where you start to prove it. I love watching Fiber mouth <laughs> off. You can tell, look at it, it's always exciting, always shouting, getting that team riled up. There's Rancid Rats really have to find a way to, uh, to get, get them a bit quieter because right now, definitely the heart and soul of this Dire Wolf team. Did you see Walcott's towel as well? Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, just got to keep your hands dry. That. You know, it, it nerves, oh. nerves exist. Sweaty palms affects your grip. So, yeah, that's a smart move. I think all the players probably so should have cool. hand towels at the ready to keep their hands dry. I use my pants and I, I mm. could never think of being so prepared. I think that's just the experience popping <laughs> on through. But now Rats and Rats, they have experience with losing three times, but also winning two times against Dire Wolves. And they need another one to pull it equal force into a game seven. One v one that where delusional is not the favorite whatsoever. The ball too far forward to walk it up high in this in game number six. Fiber now at the chance going to put that one water falling down. Walcott unable to get on top of it just in time. Yet Misty's there. Ooh, that shot looked close. Wasn't going to hit its mark. Steve still got the touch regardless, but that's a bit of a whip. Now with the bump, that ball's off for grabs in front of the box. Lurky will create the space, but only a little bit because Walcott already shutting that down. Fiber gets a nice little win over Lurky, but comes up short against Delusion. That ball had a lot of power behind it. That was a boomer and a half, sending it all the way across the pitch. Walker wants to do Steve dirty, and Steve says, absolutely not. No, no, I'm just going to be challenge you right where you're going to put it, Misty. Again, boost still, but Delusion is still able to uh, get it all the way across the pitch. Fiber now up for the play, tries to fake it out, then extends. Uh, that man can do acrobatics within the air and still keep his car <laughs> up straight. It's phenomenal to watch, but no goal this time. It looked like he was doing a fake musty into an actual musty on that last attempt right there. That was <laughs> something different. Uh, as Fiber is going to steal the ball away from Lurky. Walcott in position to slow it down. Where, where, where is everyone? Now oh, there's someone. There we go. The Rats are going to go ahead and grab this. Lurky looking to get the ball towards the backboard. Won't be able to follow up just, just yet. And Steve oh, feels a little bit awkward right there. This could open a lot of pressure for Misty, who gets the ball all the way in front of the box. But no more Wolves there to follow it through. And Lurky does get stopped by Misty. 
Well, that was so incredibly close. An important 50 out of Misty, and he does win it. Walker up to the skies. Won't be able to shoot himself, but very much can set up a teammate. Censorship, the illusion. Great redirect, or a great read on the play, rather, to see that he did have space to just take it out to the side and not boom that away. Almost a rule one. I'm sure, and I wouldn't blame them whatsoever if they did break out of it. Fiber extending, accelerating the play. Steve clears it away. I would blame them, but that's just me, as we see Vinci <laughs> try to go. Ever since Joel, ever since Joel, he set the standard. Uh, as it stands, shot coming through, not quite going to hit its mark just, just yet. Steve will actually kind of lose out to Misty right here, but Delusion still tries to find that pass forward to Steve and won't be able to go too far with it. I'm loving how both teams are starting to get physical with each other right now, though. There's been so many bumps, not many demos, as the bump sometimes can be more effective than the demo in and of itself. And it's really inhibiting both these teams from really getting a lot of momentum going in their favor. It's one of the key reasons why we're still at 0-0 with only two minutes left in regulation. It's just really rats at rats not putting themselves in an awkward scenario and actually creating proper attacks. I very much see a game seven in this, but it's rats at rats, of course, who have to do it. Lurky spiking it down off the crossbar once again, but does Steve pop it all in there? Guess where he goes? Off the woodwork. Quick challenge directly afterwards to try and mitigate the counter-attack damage. Puts it to the center. Steve should be there. Pass back and potentially going into the hands of Steve. No, it will actually, yes, it will be back into the hands of Steve. He was trying to reach his team up, but instead reached himself to the backboard. They're trying to pass it to each other but instead just hitting it away from each other rancid rats right now looking to make hit that momentum across the middle of the field but won't be able to go too far with that's a big bump from steve but misty will go ahead and collect going for the dribble play but can only go so far with it now lurky will be the one who takes it through still zero apiece the rats Getting a little bit more urgent, I feel like, with their touches, whereas the Direwolves have been quite patient throughout this game. They're constantly on that back half, waiting for an opportunity to strike. I expect we might see something here, actually, as Fiber looks to throw it back, but no, Walcott again starts to fall back on defense, starts to give that space back to the Rats. The Direwolves, they really want to play this one safe, and Steve doesn't find the angle. Oh my word, it's honestly Rancid Rats who deserve this game more. They're into the attack more, but deserving a game, that's not going to get you anywhere. You have to take it and just pull it away from your teammates. Flip reset up of the ceiling for Lurky. He uses it. Well, it's shut down by Fiber. Who else than Fiber would it be? He's, he knows exactly what's possible and knows exactly Big how bump. to counter a Steve to the center. But Walker with a phenomenal bump clears up any danger, anybody that was there uh -oh. to take a short delusion. Missing the ball, but it should be Ooh. all right. Steve, being there first. And, uh, earlier than a Misty. Walcott has to make that backboard read and actually does so nearly throwing up to Fiber. A bit too much power behind it, but now it's a read read by Lurky that gets the ball back to the corner. Eight seconds left in regulation. Rants and Rats have done it to the Wolves twice before oh. and they almost do it again, Steve. Can't quite get it in that top right beam. Oh ball goes the other way. No one's back to collect and we have ourselves a game <laughs> six overtime. Game six overtime, an important one for both teams. As usual, every single game you have to fight so hard for, but this has been the most usual game in this entire series, and it's only in game number six that they start to pick up all the pieces, and there's no awkward plays and just solid redirects every single time. Delusion getting through. Steve is there. Good faith with yes. Misty. Opens an avenue for a lurky, but Walcott is quick. And Misty's already up the pitch. He had his chance to throw it back, but no one from Direwolves wanted to play fast in the middle. Walcott post. Doesn't make the read underneath, and Lurky will go ahead and collect that ball. Steve did double commit with them, but Missy doesn't win the challenge needed to punish. Now Fiber with space, with a monochrome of boost, still almost gets the reset. Steve has to shut that one down before it can get too far forward. Nearly a minute into this one, and this overtime has actually been all wolves, it feels like. Finally, Rats are able to get onto the blue side of the pitch. And Dario was lacking the venom that they had earlier, where as soon as Rans hit Rats were even a tad bit awkward in the defense. They were ready to strike. Steve bangs into the back. Oh, that looks good. Into the hands of Delusion. That could be awkward. That's a good demo, but that's not going to fly on target. The woodwork coming in as a massive defensive clutch. Lurky still up for the play. Walk up with an early challenge. Gets into the edge of the box. Steve with a shot. Fiber dropping down off the top ropes. Do clear it away. Delusion has to stand tall in defense for Rancid Wrath. This is still a nil-nil, but the most intense one we might just see the entirety of today. Missy, though, has a chance to set up the team. Fiber's there but is unable to take it over the top Walcott now too slow to the play and that's three wolves committed a chance for the rats to strike back Missy will find some space delusion tries to shoot
shorten it. And Misty feels awkward off of that flip right there. That gives the corner to Steve, who beats out Walcott as well. Pass back to the box. Shot oh, from Lurky. Not on target. Oh, that could have been the moment for the Rats, but instead we play on. Oh my word, Rats are Rats, they get the opportunities, Misty not too much boost, Steve nicely and uh, takes it around the side, good 50 afterwards and almost a bump on fiber, Lurky still has an opportunity, Walker already back on the line, early challenge, they're really making Direwolves panic, but Rats are Rats, they can't overcommit into attack, good clear away from Lurky. I believe it was like a four minute, three second overtime with some of the most ridiculous saves I had ever seen in this exact same scenario oh no. yesterday with the Direwolves on match point and the Rats were able to bring it back this overtime already 222 win we haven't quite seen some of those crazy saves but we've seen some crazy opportunities just not be capitalized on and the rats are staying in this one hyperia they're getting their chances they're getting so close but i feel like similar to the last game they're not finishing these plays off we're seeing a couple shots go a little bit air and a little bit wide and now walcott has a chance to end mm. not quite says lurky as he comes through with a massive save that would have been unfortunate. That was a weak clear away. Steve still needs to clear it away with a lot of pressure on his back. Walker driving backwards gets the block on Delusion. Delusion has to wait for Fiber to get his touch. Then in the, he is the next in line. Walker pinches that away. Fiber was on the side wall, but they are seemingly low on boost. Fiber the highest with 78, but they get a lot of time to actually recollect that boost. Rats, rats, they're not up in the pressure anymore. Great 50 from Steve in the center. Lurky to follow that up. Still staying in possession. Pops it back to the center. No shot. Sure. Or actually, maybe a shot coming through this delusion into the corner. Misty slowing that pace down. Steve will look to punish. Fiber, though, did stay back and will keep possession in the Dire Wolves' half. Now again, delusion. This time actually takes a shot towards the goal. Misty able to corral it, yet the pace gets slowed once more in the corner. It's been jammed in the Dire Wolves' corner again and again. This one gets behind Misty. Does not get behind Fiber, but Walcott has to press forward with not a lot of boost, but the Rats weren't there to punish. Lob shot a bit too high, and now the Dire Wolves actually have a chance to attack. Oh, Misty, let's see what he can do with the ceiling here. Gets it down, Lurky with a 50. There have been so many 50s, but it's Walker with a good show. Oh my word, off the woodwork, and I guess Rats and Rats, they can only be allowed a bit of that since they hit the woodwork so many times. And absolute no boomer will be shooting off the start of uh, Lurky. Oh, delusion, zero boost in the tank indeed. Drops back to the center. Steve has to be careful, has to extend. Flip reset in the bag. Well, it was Walcott who gets there first. Good read by Walcott, slowing that one down. Had he played it forward, it would have been an amazing little dunk play big demo saved by delusion but missy's going to keep the dire wolves pressed forward at least for the time being eventually they will start to fall back we're nearly an entire extra game hyperia approaching that five minute mark fiber's going to put one up no, no one really wants to go for that one too eager save the boost save those resources delusion goes for the solo play gets past one two three wolves fiber though able to fall back at that last second still a pass thrown down fiber gets to it first as lurky gets that midfield throw steve is forward oh. interception by walcott stops the forward thinking play oh my word rats are rats and die wolves it's an absolute dead look as steve Attempts to clear away, Misty leaps in the way of it. Delusion down the line, walk up there to catch it, pops it up high, but won't really have the boost to chase that one down. Pass in field, nobody there from Dyer will still, Steve is a panicking walk up there, spiking it down. There were three defenders, but if that was a good shot, Farewell could have made it through. Still, Dyer Wolves are in possession. Fiber up to Walker. Walker will extend back into the hands of Fiber. Nicely shot down by Rancid. I love how well Rancid Rats are doing and keeping the ball away from Fiber. Every time you try to see them unload to Fiber, they miss Wait. it. Whoa! Wait. That was spooky. Uh, no one from the Rancid Rats, though, pressing forward enough to challenge that one. Now they're pressing forward. They get a nice little dunk again onto Fiber. Walcott waits underneath and gets the touch over the top of Steve. But again, Direwolf's too hesitant to play this one forward. Neither team wanting to make that mistake. I mean, pressure. We're nearly six minutes into this overtime. Misty with a chance, has the shot. Fiber was there. But Delusion once again comes through with the save. And the overtime will go on. Walcott. He wants to end this as soon as possible. You might have a lot of experience, but six minutes into overtime, nobody has a lot of experience with those. Oh, pass back. Misty and Delusion have to 50 it. Rats and Rats. 
And so Lurky pops it up, Lurky to the backboard, can he spike it down? Yes, he very much can, I don't know how, but he very much managed to do so. Delusion is going to have an awkward landing, uses all his boost to try and get that away further, but he didn't succeed in his task. And Rats and Rats, they look to set up another attack. Oh, this could be big from Steve, has the reset, Ooh. uses it to pop it off the backboard, Steve. almost finds the double, but it's Misty from underneath who takes that one away. The patient defense again and again from the Dire Wolves, stopping the Rats' momentum. That could have been massive, but now we go the other way. Misty gets the ball to the Rats' backboard. Oh my word, what a boomer down the pitch. Fiber up high gets taken out afterwards. Misty into the corner. Lurky gets that into the hands of Walker. Walker can be dangerous, pops it up. And first to the play as well, tries to fake it out with Illusion. And his teammate, we're just waiting on this line, having a bit of a chat, having a tiny cup of tea, as you might need that to calm down. And just seven minutes has been reached. Oh, swing and a miss from Fiber right there. Delusion, though, is going to have to race back because Misty has possession through the corner, thrown down to the middle. But again, no one from the Wolves willing to play forward enough to take that risk and turn it into a shot. Ping Pong getting started, but this time Fiber shuts it down in the middle and Steve did cheat forward. The Dire Wolves surely have to press forward. They have to shut down that mid pitch right now. You can see Walcott underneath looking to make the read. 50 though goes more in favor of the Rats. Delusion trying to stick with it. Goes for the dunk play on Fiber, who, well, Fiber this time does come out on top. Seven and a half minutes, nearing that 10 minute mark, Hyferia. This game still feeling on a knife's edge. Oh my word, That's he's still no! playing on the knife side as well. It's off the woodwork. Another time where Die Wolves have been denied. Rants and rats. They're not unfamiliar with those kind of plays, though. Misty looking for the bump to open it up. And I guess at this point, you might as well. Now Walker up to the play. Lurky extends and far in deep to the territory of the Big opponents. Bump. Steve up to the play. Slow. Misty is able to collect. Now Misty up to the play. It's a 1v3 situation. Delusion Bump's has to come game. up. Big Delusion doesn't do so. And it's Misty who finishes it off after eight minutes of a Time. Oh my goodness, Fiber forward and is able to get the bump that turns it into the game-winning goal. And look at Missy's face. That is someone who is done. They are done with that one for sure. Not really the jovial celebration, more the oh my goodness, I'm glad we survived out of the Dire Wolves right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. I can certainly understand that where you just kind of sit there and awe and I am in awe of this game. I wanted a game seven, but Rancy at Rat, they were denied. 17 shots is what they got. And they did not manage to break through a single time. No, but it was very, very close. As Bass, I know you've been waiting on the sidelines for a good long <laughs> while for now. I mean, really, if you include that overtime, that kind of was the seventh game and then some. So having to sit through that, I'm really curious what your take is on that series as a whole. I'm glad that you mentioned the overtime being as long as it was. I was about to respond to High Fury and be like, you mean an eighth game, basically, at that point. But uh, <laughs> listen, takeaway from that one is, is that I'm sad we have to see one of these teams go home from this event. The, fact, the fact of the matter is, is that both of these teams played out of their minds. You don't get to a seven, almost eight minute overtime without absolute near perfection. Congratulations to Dire Wolves on taking the win. Rancid Rats, you guys better be back for the next event. I expect big things from yes. this team. Absolutely, and I, I, see the thing for me though is I don't want to focus on that overtime too too much though because I don't want to take away from the performance Fiber had Hyperia. I mean, those opening games, some of the solo plays that were coming out of him was absolutely insane. I think it was game three in particular where it seemed like every time Fiber was able to get possession of the ball, it just could not be stopped. It's ridiculous how well Fiber was playing in those initial games. And then also, there, there was only one or two moments where he got caught off guard. It was absolutely insane. What a performance out of him. But Rancid Rats, look, if I got my prediction wrong, I am incredibly <laughs> happy with how this series went. Yeah, it was phenomenal stuff. And what I saw from the Rats that left me most impressed was their adaptability. I know it didn't give them the win in the end, but after seeing the Fiber show for three, four games in a row, uh, at least to me, Bass, I'm not sure about you, but it seemed like that the Rats were able to finally shut him down by just always making sure the ball never got to him. They finally stopped giving him the space. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we talked about this the entire day, and I think we're going to continue to talk about this pretty much the entire split. 
it's about <laughs> making sure to shut down these players that you know are hot and that players that are able to get that space and really do something special with it. Something I really did like from Direwolves throughout that series, though, is, I mean, we went into this one with them specifically emphasizing their solo plays. We walked out with this with them really utilizing every single player on the pitch. Yes, solo plays were definitely a big thing for the team, but they did a good job of communicating mm -hmm. using every single player effectively. If Direwolves are going to be able to play like that as a team from here on out, they very well could be one of the top two teams in the region. I very well think they can, and I feel like they got the matchup they were looking for as well, although I'm going to need a bit of confirmation. So we have the team dad, as he has apparently been anointed, Walcott, <laughs> here to join us right now. Now, you're shaking your head no, but you've even got the pictures of the family behind you. It's, it's yeah, all coming it. together. Uh, still, though, st eight minute <laughs> overtime. I saw the expression on all of your faces at the end of that one. It wasn't so much celebration. It was more like, thank goodness we survived. Tell me, what is going through your mind right now? Uh, I don't even know, man. Like, we lost to them yesterday, so we <laughs> went into this knowing they were a decent team and just... They put up a really good fight, honestly. We had to work for it, but um, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a bit. We didn't really play the style we wanted to, um, so we didn't have a great showing. I know particularly I don't feel like I played well, um, so Lucky had Fiverr there to carry us, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to just outright disagree with you in saying that Fiverr carried you. Fantastic performance all around, my friend. Really well done. But I do still have a question about Fiverr. We saw him very vocal every single match when you guys were able to finish that one out. He, You mentioned it also in the pre-show in that sort of video at the introductory. What exactly are they say? What is he saying to you guys in those type of moments? Is it mostly words of encouragement or is it just pure excitement? It's always words of encouragement, always telling us that, you know, we're the best players, we, we deserve to win, we're going to do it, um, we're better. And yeah, that sort of stuff just, you know, get us hyped, make us feel confident. Um, he's really good for that. Yeah, he does definitely get us hyped up for the games. Love it. And I, I hope your ears are still all right after all that screaming, of course. And <laughs> you come incredibly prepared into this with with a towel next to you. But after after this series, do you reckon you're going to get a big, bigger towel for upcoming series? <laughs> Man, I was sweating so much that whole time. I, I hate playing Rocket League, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I never mean, want to get a proper towel. I've got, I've got the gym towel. The gym towel does the job, so we'll be right. Yeah, there we go. I don't know. If I were in your position right now, I'd be trying to send some messages to Direwolves. Hey, team towels. I don't know. That could that could look pretty good and get them up on stream. Uh, before we send you on your way to celebrate that victory, I do want your thoughts on the Renegades up next because as they've kind of admitted before, you guys seem to have a bit of their number. And I'd have to imagine this is the exact semifinal matchup that you would have been hoping for. Yeah, um, I was happy when I heard we had Renegades in the semi because obviously it was going to be Renegades at Ground Zero. Um, I feel like we play better against Renegades on the day. Uh, in scrims, they've definitely got our number, but I feel like everyone plays a little bit different when they're under a bit of pressure. And I think if we were to be able to knock one of them off, it would be Renegades. So hopefully we can put in a good show tomorrow. Well, I'll be looking forward to watching that show again. Congratulations on surviving, which if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to double check. That might have been the longest overtime of RLCS 2021-2022 just yet. So you've got that under your belt. I'm sure you're absolutely <laughs> thrilled with that one. I can tell by your face. But uh, one last time, congratulations and thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that's not a record I want to hold, but oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, well, I, I don't imagine it'll be too long until someone else is able to go over the top of that. There, there's always going to be one cheeky 10 plus minute overtime. Who knows? It might not even come in our next series. Uh, however, that one was something special. Hi, Furia. I, I kind of want to throw back to you real quick with some closing thoughts on this one. Having seen the Direwolves now as well as the Renegades, a little preview for tomorrow. Do you think the Direwolves are going to be able to take it to what is one of the favorites of the region? Well, if Dad Colt manages to um, perform to the same level once again as he was here today and able to keep the nerves up to a, a good level, he, he just shows his experience and he says that Fiverr is the one who carries it through with the screaming and giving encouragement, but I think a calm, cool, collective mind can very much dial it back in as well. I do agree, and well, I think we need to cool ourselves off a bit as well. I'm just going to say Walcott isn't the only one who was sweating throughout that series, so we're going to throw to a quick five-minute beauty break, but when we come back, we're going to continue right along with our quarterfinals. More action here in RLCS Oceania.